This is the fun three seconds while we wait. Oh, I see it says we're live now. Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing good out there. Dane here from Moving to Canada. Uh, and I am joined today by our editor, Mr. Hugo O'Doherty from Moving to Canada. Uh, and we are here today to bring you the latest express entry draw results because we just had a draw take place a few minutes ago. But we're going to wait just a few minutes for uh, our audience to jump on into the live stream. Uh, in the meantime, Hugo, uh, how are you doing? How are things uh, over in, in Montreal in this uh, fun holiday season of 2020? Uh, we're trying to eke out as much fun as we can, I think. Uh, it's definitely the strangest and um, least boisterous holiday season I've ever uh, taken part in. So there's no restaurants open, no bars, no cafes. Um so uh, it's it's pretty much stay at home. Yeah, uh, that's what they're asking us to do. Uh, how are things in Nova Scotia? Oh, things in Nova Scotia are are uh, I mean, COVID related, pretty good. Um, Atlanta, Canada continues to uh, be one of the the best places um, in the country uh, in terms of COVID. Um, so things are kind of normal ish here. We're allowed to have like smaller, like 10 person gatherings for Christmas. So I'm back home, uh, going to spend time with my, my parents and a couple of my nieces and nephews this Christmas, which will be really nice. Um, and I recognize we're super lucky because of that. And look guys, if you're watching this, uh, tuning in from anywhere else around the world, let us know what are things like in your neck of the woods? Uh, how are things going there? Um, if you're in Canada and you're not in Montreal or in Nova Scotia, give us a, another Canadian perspective or ask us your questions about express entry and Canadian immigration. We'll come back to those at the end. But let's jump into the uh, the reason why you guys are all here. Uh, you're here to uh, listen to us talk about the latest express entry draw results. So, Hugo, we just had an express entry draw take place. Uh, give people a rundown of what happened in today's draw, how many invitations, what was the cutoff? Yeah, so first of all, I'm delighted there was a draw, right? I know uh, you and I had a little wager this morning on whether there'd be a draw or not, and I think uh, you owe me a dollar or something. I don't know what a that was. A pint after but, the uh, pub's open again. Hope. Um, no, I'm delighted that there was a draw. Uh, it's the 23rd of December. Uh, you know, it could have gone either way. There could have been a delay, but uh, it's great to see those invitations uh, coming out today. Um, another large number, right? So that's the fourth draw in a row with this figure, I believe. So and that's since mid-November. So we're looking at 20,000 new invitations just since the third week of November. Yeah, which is and um, like unprecedented by like leaps and bounds. Yeah, and we can see the effect that's having on the cutoff score. Um, so we're down to 468, which is the lowest it's been in more than 15 months. So uh, since October 2019. Yeah. Um, you know, this is great. It's going down. It's going down consistently. We can see the effect that larger draws are having on that CRS cutoff score after um, a strange year in which uh, uh, there was a lot of program specific draws during the sort of uh, summer and, and spring. Uh, and now we're, we seem to be rolling with these all program draws, larger draws and slight decreases in the cutoff score each time. So there's real hope that for 2021, um, if it can move forward in this vein, can can continue that and and maybe you know even lower again for into the 460s and potentially lower than that. Yeah, and of course it all depends on you know how many draws are happening, how many invitations uh, are being issued. But uh, I've just pulled up our reporting on today's draw, uh, and one of the things that we've highlighted here is uh, how this uh, high number of ITAs fits into Canada's immigration plans for 2021. Uh, in 2021, Canada plans to welcome more than 400,000 new permanent residents. That's also a record-setting figure. Um, and I believe it's more than 100,000. I think about 108,000 of those are expected to come directly through express entry. So uh, we we do have a high number of ITAs issued in uh, the past four draws in a row. Uh, and, you know, we, we, we can't predict exactly what IRCC is going to do. But based on their uh, their targets for next year, it wouldn't be surprising if they try to maintain some some high levels of ITAs going forward. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting as well heading into the new year, like with more language test centers open, the revised points for French language ability, then more people might 
look for that as a way to improve their score. Um, there's sort of more ways to potentially like take a proactive stance with express entry and with Canadian immigration as a whole. There's there's more ways for people to, t- to try and navigate the system. Yeah. So um, that's all exciting for people. Yeah, for sure. Um, and the other big uh, caveat, which is maybe a bit less exciting for people, but I do think it's important for us to mention is, is COVID. Um, there, it does continue to sort of have this uh, shadow of uncertainty hanging over the, the future of Canadian immigration. You know, we've got uh, a bit of an uncertain couple of months on optimistic news. Canada has a uh, Uh, started its uh, vaccine campaign. So Canadians are being vaccinated. Uh, Justin Trudeau, the prime minister, has said they aim to have all Canadians who want a vaccine to be able to get one by September of next year. So hopefully, you know, that will result in uh, looser border restrictions. People will be able to travel here once again. But uh, I do just want to throw that out there because it is this this big question mark. We're not sure exactly the impact COVID is going to have uh, in 2021. On that team, Dane, they just approved a second vaccine just a couple of hours ago. Um, so that's going to start rolling out in the next few weeks here in Canada, which is That's great. the Moderna, is it the Moderna vaccine? Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, that's good to hear. Yeah. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think they're hoping to get all the all the really vulnerable populations and healthcare workers vaccinated by the end of uh, March of next year, which is, you know, pretty ambitious. It's like seven and a half million people um okay so we got some questions coming in here um so abbott is asking abbott says i'm interested in working in ontario uh retrofitting and construction work um hugo do you have any advice for people who are looking for work in canada but who are not in canada at the moment yeah, one thing, I just Ontario-specific point off the bat is something to watch out for in 2021 is the a couple of their uh, PNP streams are expected to move towards an expression of interest system. So right now it's more like first come, first serve, and the job offer streams are expected to move towards an expression of interest system, sort of like where you get points and the government of Ontario picks people, uh, something similar enough to express entry. That's something to watch out for. Yeah. But then more broadly, um, what can you do to improve your chances of getting a job in Canada while not physically being in Canada? Um, look, the one of the great things about the last few years, and it's been accelerated this year, is the, the power and ability of digital technology to within the job hunt. Like a decade now, give or take. And LinkedIn has been a great networking tool for people. They can, they can do a lot on there. Um, if you're not familiar with LinkedIn, there's loads of good information out there. We've got a page on our website about how to leverage it into your mm-hmm. job hunt. But um, the real key asset that people can have is their resume. Uh, you might know it as a CV in your own country. Um, uh, like a lot of people make the error of making their resume more about their, a list of duties that they've performed in various roles rather than achievements that they have accomplished in various roles. Um, there is a specific format that Canadian employers and recruiters expect to see in a resume. Um, there is some sort of customization that you can do around that, but there are some sort of like basics that need to be in there. And the thing that we really try to get across to people, and we see it like we have in this successful over and over, we do have a recruitment arm uh, in construction and engineering called Outpost Recruitment. And the Outpost staff uh, are big on... Um, uh, showing your achievements in your resume. So making it quantifiable, show a number behind the duty. So rather than saying, you know, uh, I was in charge of maintaining the website and there were 400 pages on the website, say, uh, I improved page load speed time by one second and this increased uh, website traffic. I don't know. I'm, I'm making that. Right. And that's really... Like that, that's, that's something that you can use across any industry. I, I use software there as an example, but like 
there's there's so much you can do around that. You really got to put numbers behind it and show why your achievements are better than the alternative candidates. Yeah, and uh, we do have a ton of uh, resources for people who are looking to uh, find work in Canada, including guides on how to improve your your resume. I just, while you were speaking there, Hugo scrolled through some of the, the resources located right in the employment section. Uh, and I'll just highlight that for our users on the Move Into Canada website. We also have a free uh, Canadian resume template that you can follow to uh, style your CV uh, by Canadian standards. In order to access that, you have to create a free move into Canada account um, and I've popped a little link into the comments there it's the pinned comment uh, that you can follow to uh, create that free move into Canada account and access that resume uh, template uh, we had one other question coming here from Omer going in a bit of a different direction Omer is asking uh, do you have any idea about what the government is doing for people with expired COPRs okay so I'm going to try to handle this question and uh, I'm going to uh, try to do this from memory and we'll see how 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 well I've uh, learned the COVID uh, special immigration measures. Um, but if you have an expired COPR and you are residing uh, in uh, in the United States or Canada, um, you, you can still activate your COPR at this time. Uh, if you're living in the United States, you have to be uh, traveling to Canada to move here permanently. So you can't do what's known as a soft landing in lots of circles where you travel to the border and then uh, go back to the United States. If you're outside the country and you have a COPR and it was issued after the Canadian travel restrictions came into effect, so that's March of, uh, March of this year, um, then you, you cannot travel to Canada right now. If your COPR expires in the meantime, there's, there's nothing that you can do about it. They're going to come back and deal with this later on. You don't have to freak out, uh, because your COPR has expired and you weren't able to travel to Canada. Uh, that's, they know that, um, they're going to come back and deal with this later on. But at this moment in time, we don't know what the timeline is for that. We don't know what the procedure is going to look like for that. It's all kind of dependent on the progression of the pandemic um, and hopefully as vaccines roll out uh, across Canada and around the world we'll get more clarity on that in the new year uh, but at this point all you can really do Omer is uh, sit tight and and wait uh, until we get more information on that topic um, and we do have a ton of info on the latest travel restrictions here I'm just going to show it to to you guys uh, because uh, rather than speaking from uh, memory if you head to our uh, COVID news feed um, you'll be able to find all of the travel restrictions and uh, summaries of the special immigration measures with sourced information so you can always see like we link to the source uh, the primary source where this information is coming from uh, so you can get uh, get that uh, detailed info there um Great. So let's see. I think uh, I think that covers most of the questions that we've had come through today. And uh, I see where. Uh, oh, we got another question here. Um, in from Marks asking for under the new immigration plan, does it mean that there's a higher chance uh, for approval of permanent resident status? Uh, and I guess that's referring to the higher plan for next year. Hugo, do you want to handle that mm. one? Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Um, great question. Was it, it Marx? It was Marx. Um, uh, good question, Marx. So yeah, like higher targets is one factor that goes into the potential competitiveness of the system, right? So if there's if they're going to take more people in, then great, uh, more people will be taken in. But there's also pot the potential for more people to be interested. In and we're going to see, I think, Canada come out of this current global economic downturn in quite a strong position vis-a-vis -vis other countries and people might see Canada as an attractive destination um, so higher targets yes but if more people want to move to Canada and are eligible to do so and create a profile so that they're putting up their hand and saying to the government pick me pick me um, that might have a sort of leveling effect you know if if the number of people that Canada accepts moves up in a similar sort of ratio to the number of people who want to move to Canada, there should be some sort of leveling off there. And uh, it might be slightly uh, less competitive. Mm -hmm. That's really, we'll see, we'll see coming months and years. 
Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it'll, it'll be interesting to see sort of the long-term uh, impacts of, of the, the pandemic uh, sort of interacting with Canada's very high immigration targets uh, for, I mean, they've been increasing immigration targets even before the pandemic uh, on an annual basis. Um, great. So I think that about covers it for, um, for our express entry questions, our news for today. Uh, let's give a quick little recap of the draw results just for people who may have missed them up at the beginning of the video. Um, we had uh, the what's likely to be the last express entry draw of the year take place uh, just a few minutes ago. Um, <laughs> if IRCC continues the two-week schedule that they usually do for Express Entry. Um, this week's draw issued 5,000 invitations, another record-setting number, and the CRS score cutoff has decreased by one point down to 468 points, which is, uh, what did you say, Hugo? It's the lowest level since um, since October of... Since October of last year, since 2019. Okay, so uh, by more yeah. than a year, it's the lowest level. Lowest level yeah. for all program draws. We had those, like, PMP yes. or CEC draws happening earlier this year that had lower cutoffs, but uh, for all programs. Uh, great. Well, I think we'll wrap it up there. If you're watching this later on, you got questions, pop them in the comments. Uh, we'll come by and try to answer a few of them uh, via text later on. Um, thank you so much for joining me today, Hugo. It's always a pleasure and uh, excited My to pleasure. do this again in 2021. And uh, Me too. thank you to uh, all of you folks who tuned in. Uh, we're always happy to bring you the latest immigration news and updates, and we will see you next time. Bye. Happy holidays, everybody.